Hello everyone, I am Papa C and this is Agnes C. And in the intro, Agnes asks, How are you? So hope you are getting enough rest and excited for today's topic on baby's bath time. Our video today is to introduce the items that are needed for our baby's bath time. But do take note, it is not about how to properly bathe our baby and the techniques involved. For that, you may need to attend prenatal or antenatal courses to learn from professionals with certifications and qualifications to learn better. The items will be divided into two areas, those needed in the toilet for the bath and those needed in the cot for drying and dressing of your baby. So let's get to it. The first item will be cotton balls. You will do this in the cot where you will first need to prepare cooled boiled water and to dab the cotton balls into the water so that you can clean your baby's face. After that, you'll remove the clothes and diaper and proceed to carry your baby to the toilet for the bath. The next item will be the baby bathtub. We've got ours online or you can find them easily from any neighborhood stores. And all you need is a simple and basic one. Moving on to bath thermometer. As quoted from the families for life.sg website, the best bath temperature should be between 37 to 38 degrees Celsius and 36 degrees Celsius for newborn. Any cooler than 37 degrees Celsius is not recommended as it might lower your child's normal body temperature. Once the water is filled, you will need the baby shampoo and body wash, which is a two-in-one. Babies are generally quite clean, so you will just need one drop of the shampoo, if not even just the plain water will suffice. When your baby is older, you may allow a few more drops. Choosing a baby shampoo is as important as it must not contain harmful chemicals like parabens and phthalates. You might also consider those that are tear-free, fragrance-free, and uses plant-based or natural ingredients. The next item would be the baby bath cloth. So give your baby a nice gentle wipe from the head to the body and all the way to the toes. And also remember to wipe the skin folds of your baby. For baby combs and brushes, as Agnes is gifted with a lot of hair, we use the baby brush to gently brush her hair during the bath and after the bath, we will use the comb to comb our hair. For babies with little or no hair, it will still be good to use them time to time as it prevents baby dandruff and cradle cap. Next would be the bath toys. Cleaning and bathing our baby is our top priority. However, bathing can also be fun. So with the bath toys, you will keep our baby entertained. However, for the first month, you might want to leave out the toys so that you can focus on getting the techniques right to clean the baby. The next item would be the bath towel. So once the bath is done, you'll need to wrap your baby up in the bath towel and bring him or her out onto the cot. Next would be the changing mat. Changing mats are such a lifesaver as you will never know when your baby pee pee or poo poo. Too many times from personal experience that once you dry up your baby and remove the towel, your baby pee pee or poo poo. Well, at least it's on the changing mat and not on the mattress cover. Subsequent items, we have them in our trolley. It is very convenient as it fits everything and it is movable. In it, we have diapers. And right after drying your baby, here's a pro tip, wear the diaper first in case the baby pee pee or poo poo. We use nappy cream for our baby. The purpose of the nappy cream is to create a barrier between the skin and the contaminants, which are usually the pee pee or poo poo, which may irritate the skin. We use the offspring nappy cream, which is said to be organic and gentle on the skin. It is important to stand by some desertine as well for nappy rash. The next item would be the baby lotion. This helps to keep our baby's skin smooth and moisturized. Similar to the baby shampoo and body wash, do make sure that it's free from paraben and other harmful chemicals and that it is hypoallergenic. Next would be the baby cotton swabs. First to note is that baby cotton swabs are much smaller in size than adult ones. Also, when we think of cotton swabs, we think of digging nose or ears with it. Please, please do not dig your baby's nose or ears with the cotton swab as it may cause an infection. Cotton swabs are for other purposes like cleaning off tiny creases of the skin as well as skin folds. For us, we use it to clean Agnes's web of her hands and feet as we find that dirt do get stuck in them every now and then. Moving on to nasal cleaners. We use nasal spray like Sterima or nasal aspirators to cleanse our baby's nose. We do not use these every day, only when needed and especially when there are some difficulties in breathing. Up next will be the oral wipes. It helps to prevent milk tongue, which is the white coating on the tongue of our baby as milk is the main food source. It also helps to prevent the growth of bacteria and generally helps to maintain good oral health for our baby. 
Next will be the baby's thermometer, as it is important to monitor our baby's body temperature. We have both the contactless one that measures on the forehead as well as the ear thermometer. While you are drying or dressing your baby, coming from experience, your baby may be fussing or crying very loudly and that is where you will need a pacifier to soothe your baby. Next item will be baby wet wipes. At any part of the cleaning process, you will definitely need wet wipes, so always have them within your reach. We use two brands. The first will be Clover Soft, which is meant for the face and hands, and the next will be Odam wet wipes which we are used for the rest of the body. Do take note that not all wet wipes can be used on the face. You might consider other cleaning products like multi-surface cleaner for cleaning of baby products like the surfaces of the cot. As you know, sometimes the baby's PP is like firing artillery, it can go in all directions and you may need to wipe down the cot. Last but not least, biodegradable trash bag as there will be things to dispose of after the bathing and cleaning of your baby. Alright, here's the summary of all the items that we have covered and of course decisions you make are personal and should suit your own needs. Again, you may consider attending prenatal and antenatal courses conducted by professionals to learn better about how to properly and safely bathe your baby. Hope you find this video useful and please do give this video a like, subscribe to my channel and share to other parents to help them out. Thank you, get enough rest and see you soon.